Hello everybody, this is Havoc and welcome back to Victoria 3 with our user interface tutorial series. And today we're going to be looking at your budget. Your budget, again, I'm not going to explain economics to you. I'm not going to tell you how to, well, not necessarily how, not the intricate details. This is meant to get a user inter interface overview to allow you to understand your budget better. So let's dive right in. Your budget is literally that. It is your ability to see if you are making money or if you are losing money. In this case, we are losing a little bit of money, but we'll go into that in just a second. You start with your overview. You can currently see we're making or we're losing eleven and a half thousand dollars a week. If we hovered over that, it gives us the same information that this screen does. Just a little bit bigger and doesn't give as much information. Now you have your re national revenue and you have national expenses. Now you can see exactly what you're making. Across your revenue, we're making 148. Our expenses are 160,000. First is your taxation level. This is limited by your laws. We'll dive into laws in the next video, so be sure to take a look at that. Hopefully I can explain it pretty well. But you can see here that based on per capita taxation, if I were to lower taxes or if I were to raise taxes, you would be able to see how much I'm going to make. And in fact, you can do that by hovering over these as well. So it would be beneficial to go to high taxes. It would give us a lot. The kicker is that one, it reduces your legitimacy, which is pretty important for radicals. But also, if you tax the people more, your standard of living is going to go down. That's just a fact. They are paying more in taxes, which means they have left to spend on goods, which means their standard of living will decrease. And because you have enacted high taxes, the radicals will increase by 25% more from your standard of living decreases. That's pretty crucial. But also, if you were to decrease, if say Austria is just booming, I'm making $100,000 a week, I can actually reduce taxes, which increases legitimacy, and I actually lose the number of radicals that I would from a standard of living decrease. Of course, that's also because you shouldn't see as much decrease from standard of living because they have more money to do stuff. I will say that your taxation levels, pay attention to them if you look into your laws because they could have some huge repercussions one way or another. Next is your income taxes. This is just straight up income taxes on the wages, your poll taxes. Uh, this is a tax on every working adult. I actually didn't know that. Um, it impacts the lower strata the most, so that's something to consider. You have consumption taxes, which are consumption by a uh, consumption are uh, enacted by your authority you could see here for 500 authority we could tax grain which would put us in a net positive balance but it would decrease the standard of living because again you're consume you're putting a tax on something that almost everyone consumes so wouldn't be a good idea your tariffs are your uh, goods or the revenue you make from taxing it's another tax your imports and your exports. Minting is literally your capability of the country to print money. Your investment pool transfer, as I mentioned in the previous video, your uh, POPs can invest into an investment pool. So that way, when you uh, need to build something uh, based on your current laws, you can see we can do agriculture, plantations, ranches, etc., etc. If you have a huge investment pool, you don't pay money if you are building in those industries. You just don't. It pulls from the investment pool. It's an amazing way to develop your country if you can do it right. Diplomatic packs are literally things like uh, customs unions or puppets, not customs union, excuse me, puppets, dominions, um, war reparations are a really good one as well. Things uh, as a result of diplomacy. Additional income are things like events. Those typically aren't super common for income wise but just know that that's there. Your expenses are always going to be construction goods, government and military wages and buildings. Those will always be your largest ones. Now, you can always pause. You can pause construction, which means that uh, we won't be consuming anything. Uh, we don't have that anymore going on, but you won't build. That's important if you're starting to hemorrhage a lot of money, if you're in heavy in debt and you still have a lot of buildings. I would recommend pausing rather than deleting. But you can also affect government wages. Now, government wages, if you go down or up, affects its represented uh, interest group, which is always going to be the intelligentsia. So the more that you goods or the higher wages you have, the more government wages and approval you get from the intelligentsia, 
the lower you reduce it, the more money you make because you're reducing wages, but the less the intelligentsia likes you. And then of course, if you hover over these, they do give breakdowns. And this is an important aspect because you can see here what I'm spending it on. So if you can reduce the price of what these costs in the industry, you'll be paying less for them. But government wages, you can see the buildings that affect them for government buildings. You can see what we're spending our money on and that is spent on paper and clippers, which is a lot. So if you can reduce the cost of paper, then you would significantly reduce the goods for your government building cost, therefore making you more money. The same goes for military wages. We have a lot from barracks and naval bases, but we are also paying a lot for artillery for our small arm. So if we can find a way to manufacture them or import them through the market, that would reduce the price and therefore we would save money. These are gonna be kind of the same as up here. Welfare payments, if you have the law enacted, you can actually pay people welfare. It reduces their radicalism. Subsidies are your government's capability of taking on the burden of an industry that isn't being profitable. So that's pretty important as well. It gives you a good idea. If you can see from your subsidies, um, if it would show up right here. If you're looking at this and you're like, holy crap, I have 20,000 gold and subsidies. I need to see what industries I'm supporting and figure out how to support them in other ways. Diplomatic packs are the same thing as uh, over here in your income, just if it's in your case. Interest. You have the ability to go into debt in this game. And if you go into debt, you are paying interest. You are borrowing from the public sector. This isn't even investment pool type of stuff. You are literally borrowing from the savings of the people who have built up your country. And as a result, you are paying them interest. Now, I have said this entire time throughout Vicky 3 development that living in debt is going to have a net positive for you. Having gold reserves does nothing but give you a security blankie. And if you need that security blankie, that's fine. But honestly, it's going to be better if you live in debt because as you are paying interest to the public sector pops, they are increasing their standard of living by having an influx of uh, income. Now, we looked at this in the buildings, but eventually what you can do is that you can have different people who are going to be invested in those buildings. So that means if I have interest and I have a worker cooperative, my laborers and my machinists are going to have the benefit of getting into that interest. Now, I can't show this right now, and I don't really want to fast forward enough time, but basically that is how interest works, and it's very important to me to keep at least some level of a debt because you can be operating positively while still operating in debt. It's a bit of a balance, and maybe I'll make a video solely on operating in debt as that might be a good idea, but uh, I won't do that for now. So that is your overview of your budget. Here you have your states, and I pointed this out before in the other broad overview, but you have things broken down by wage. You can see who's getting an average best wage across the board, across all industries. Expenses, what country is spending the most or what state is, and taxes. Right now, Bohemia is in a world of hurt because they are operating at a huge net negative. Most of these places are if I'm being honest, which is a reason why I'm losing money. But this is a good idea. So that way, if I can be like, Bohemia, what is going on? I can see that there's a lot of barracks, a lot of government admin, and a lot of construction centers in here. I can also see that their biggest expense is from subsistence farms, which is awful. So I need to do more to boost this state up so that it can be more profitable and not be hemorrhaging money so much. Or I can filter by who has the most, and I can then go from there. So it's an important distinction here. I don't use states terribly much as I can pretty generally get a good idea on who's operating in a negative and who's not. But for you who may not be, that's fine. Lastly, for your budget is your assets. There are three pools here. One is your principal. And this is your credit line. This is your debt credit. Now, of course, it's at zero because we're not in debt, but you can see the maximum credit is 8.42 million. And if we go down here, we'll see that in a minute that you can see why. This is your reserves. This is your gold reserves. Our gold reserve limit is 5.7 million. As I've mentioned several times in making these videos, 
I just don't enjoy the concept of gold reserves. Not that it's a bad mechanic on Paradox's part. It is a historically accurate, very relevant economical thing to consider. But having gold reserves does nothing for you, as far as I know, nothing for you that will benefit you outside of a security blanket. Now I'm probably gonna get proved wrong here. Nope, I'm not. They can only accumulate to a fraction of your gross domestic product. And then there we go. Stockpiling gold will eventually lead to depleting your economic engine. That's not good. That's why I operate in debt. What I would do if I was playing as Austria is I would basically start pumping, pumping, pumping into buildings to where I was hemorrhaging money, getting out of that gold reserve functionality and getting into debt to accrue interest, but managing the debt limit. So that's just a word of advice there. And again, I may do a tutorial on that. That sounds like something that's pretty fun to do. That would be easy to do for myself. So again, we have a cap of 8.42 million. And that comes from this. It's the amount of money the treasury can borrow from its economy, equal to the sum of all domestic cash reserves, plus a base value determined by the GDP. That's awesome. This is your safety blankie, more than a gold reserve is. Basically, the more I am pumping into my country, the more that I am building, the more that those buildings are profitable so they can increase their cash reserves, the higher my debt credit ceiling is. Now, I can tell you very, very quickly, you can run away with this. I've had games that I have played in my 70 plus hours of playing that I have had 60 to $70,000 in interest payments that I have to crawl out of. Now I've found ways to do it because I can figure out how to manage money pretty effectively. But this is interesting because you can see here the limits that all of them bring, which I think is just absolutely awesome. So the more you invest in your country and the more that you straddle that debt limit line into your interest, the more your credit limit will get built up and built up, giving you an even greater safety net than your gold reserves ever could and benefiting your upper strata pops at the same time. That, my friends, is an overall of your budget. I am not here to give you a guide on how to generate more income or how to manage your balance, your budget. None of that. This is strictly a UI tutorial based thing. And we're at the end of it. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was comprehensive as well. If you did enjoy it, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, turn on bell notifications, and I will see you in the final video, which is going over politics.